days out of surgery, everything was going great. Well, for some reason I flatlined again. I was in intensive care ICU. So I coded. And this time when I coded, I also seen them working on me. But this one was kind of different. As I'm watching them work on me, I see a root beer bottle in the rafters of the intensive care unit. I think somebody, when they built the hospital, left it there. So in a day or two, after everything was back to that was okay, for kicks and giggles, I told the surgeons, I said, somebody left a root beer bottle in the, in the rafters. They laughed at me, they said, no. Well, apparently a doctor told maintenance, and maintenance wanted to know if this chick was telling the truth or not. That's what they found. They pulled that root beer bottle out of the rafters and brought it to me. And they were amazed. Things do happen out of weird ways. Okay. Yes. And, and, and like I know about that, like, they can like walk through them, like run on them. <laughs> <laughs> I could not walk through them. I was like hovering over, over the like area. Looking from above? Yes, I was looking from above. Like how are you looking from above? Okay, I wasn't like a bat, but I wasn't, I was kind of like hovering. I didn't have wings, I was just suspended. I don't know that part yet. I still ask myself lots of questions. And why me, why these experiences and stuff. Do you ever go in anywhere else except for like emergency where I have to go in? Like did you just walk around the hospital at all? Or did you I did not go around the hospitals or anything. I had deceased family members that were there with me because I remember seeing a few of them. Uh, there was no animals. I get asked that, were there animals there? No, there were bright lights, a calm, collective feeling, peace. You know, how, think of the most peaceful place you've ever been. That's kind of like it felt like, okay? Um, I'm sorry, it probably wasn't a very good description of what it felt like. It just, it's hard to explain. Did you cry? I did. <laughs> I did. And I was so mad when I moved from Hawaii to Pennsylvania. It grows with you. But I think that's interesting. So um, I started to recover pretty good. And um, after being at Walter Reed for three weeks, they told me, well, you're not making progress. Oh, I forgot to tell you a couple things, sorry. I'm scatterbrained for a second. As I was on the operating room table, I had three uh, blood clots. What are blood clots called when they're in the brain? Anybody know? I'm sorry? A thrombose. Those are in your legs. Okay, you're in the right direction. You're in the right direction. I know you guys have heard these. Can you start with an S? Starts with an S. Stroke. Or is you, they're strokes. Okay, has anybody had a relative that had a stroke? Okay. Well, they could not figure out why I had three little blood clots in my brain. What had happened was after they took the tumor out, there was so much blood, my brain tissue could not absorb it all, so it caused a root clot. So um, they think from that is why I got paralyzed. So I was not doing very good. After week three, they decided that I was not making any progress because by then, after a stroke patient, the part of your body should start to wake up. Your mind never went away. They decided to move me to a different place. They moved me to National Rehabilitation Hospital. It's in DC. Anybody want to go into physical therapy? They make good money, let me tell you. <laughs> but you need your master's degree to be a physical therapist. <laughs> so, um, my very first day at National Rehabilitation Hospital, 
and laying in bed, and of course the phlebotomist come and wake you up to draw your blood, right? Well, I'm laying there, and um, it's a strange place, so I'm awake anyway, and I hear this nurse in the background talking, and she says, you see that patient over there? She came over from a brain tumor. She's fat, she's lazy, she doesn't do anything. Why did we get her here? I'm just thinking, who are they talking about? Well, she got closer to me, and she says, she's just taking up bed space. She should have died. Whoa, wait a minute. First of all, why do you talk negative about a patient? That was my first thought. I was thinking, well, maybe she's having a bad day. So I just laid there and I didn't say anything. Okay. Well, the next day rolls around. Oh my gosh, I get the same nurse. She even says more rude things to me. This time, I looked at her, she came closer to me, and I called her on the carpet. I says, excuse me, a nurse to nurse, you do not talk bad in front of your patient. Correct? She was kind of startled. When you have a patient in your care, what is the last of your five senses that a patient will use? Anybody know? Hearing. Okay, if you're ever in a room working on a patient, you never talk badly because they can still hear you. Okay? So this time I called her on the carpet. I says, you never talk bad about a patient. And I says, first of all, you know very little about my history. Second of all, you're very rude and unprofessional. And I said, third of all, I want you out of here. So I went to the head nurse. And I told her, I said, she will never take care of me as long as I'm in this place. She was irate. It's like, you have rights as a patient. Remember that. So um, I saw the negative side of nursing, and I saw the positive sides. So if she did that to me, and I stood up for myself, how many times if somebody did it to somebody and never said a word? I'm not going to lie. So, here I am in uh, rehab. Well, I'm not progressing very well, well, and they call a family meeting, and they says, hey, we have an occupational therapist. Anybody know what OT does? Occupational therapist? They will teach you how to use your silverware to eat, feed yourself. I have a physical therapist there. I have doctors at the table, and they says, you know what? We have decided that your spouse, Jenny, is never gonna walk again. We're gonna get her fitted for a wheelchair. How would that make 